I told y'all this before, and I, and I, and I confess this to God, and, and I, I'm a worrier. Y'all get an amen on that? <laughs> amen because you know I'm a worrier. Let me get an amen because you're a worrier. We got any worriers here? We just, we just worry, and, and, and it's really weird because we worry, and then we worry, maybe I worry too much, and then we worry, maybe I'm not worrying enough, and and then we, uh, you know, we, we, and then especially as Christians, we think worry is such a, and worry is a sin. Worry is a sin, you know, so we, we confess our worry to God, but, but as Christians, we have a hard time with worry, so we use words like, anybody here a procrastinator? You worrier. Uh, any perfectionist? You worrier. See, you use those safe words, but let me tell you something. We do those things because we worry, and the biggest, the biggest thing that we've got to deal with is the fact of this. We're not really in control, are we? And that's the hardest part, and that's why it takes faith. And, and as, you, as, you, uh, as you get closer to God, and, and you get to the point where you can allow God to handle the stuff, and God tells you not to worry, but, but He doesn't just get mad and take you out because you worry. He wants you to worry. And, and what I want to talk about today, I'm going to throw something at you you've probably never heard before. Look at the title of this. Embrace Worry. As a reminder, if you've heard me teach on anger before, anger's not a bad thing until you do something bad with it. You know what I'm saying? Anger's not a bad thing until you hang on it and you let it tear you up and everything. But anger is a warning. It lets you know that something's going on inside that needs to be changed. Well, worry's the same thing. Worry's not a just a terrible bad thing in itself. As a matter of fact, if you can learn that as soon as you start to worry, just like as soon as you start to be angry or any other negative emotion for that matter, if you can take that as a signal that I've got to get refocused and, and, and something's going on so I've got to make a change, then it becomes a good thing. Right? Can you see that? So what I want you to learn to do is I want you to embrace worry and, and, and take a hold of it and do something with it quickly because I'm telling you something. You stay with anger too long, what happens? You get depressed. You stay with worry too long, what happens? You get depressed. I mean, that, basically that's the way it goes. So we're going to give you, I'm going to give you some facts of life today. I'm going to preach this pretty fast and get you all out of here and, 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 and get us going. But, but I thought with all I've been dealing with, I'm going to tell you something, I was a bear this week. I yelled at Brett at least a couple times, and I yelled at my wife probably more times than that. And, and uh, I was wondering why my kids weren't calling me. You know, there were just some, just some worry things going on, and it affects everybody around us, doesn't it? So, so let's look at, at a few things that I think will help us embrace worry as a reminder and realize that when worry comes up, i got to do something with that. And, and learn to know what worry is in your life. Got any teeth clenchers in here? Some of you... Yeah, I'll tell you something else too, just as a hint. Husbands and wives, uh, mothers and fathers, a lot of times the people around us know we're struggling before we do. You know, we'll go, why is my jaw hurting? And your wife go, because you've been chomping your teeth for the last three weeks. You know what I'm saying? We notice those things, so we help each other out when we do that. So let's just look. I'm going to give you some facts of life to go with what worry is, and then I'm going to tell you how to deal with it, okay? The first is this. First fact of life, stuff happens. It just happens. And, and I really realized this when I used to work with teenagers all the time because teenagers, more than adults, teenagers oftentimes think they have no control of their life because what? Your parents have control of your life and the schools have control of your life and there's so many things that control your life and, 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 and we, we struggle with that. And, and what I've always told teenagers and what I've always told adults when I worked with, with them is, is we just got to come to the point that we realize, look, there's, there's really only, I'm just going to give you a hint, there's only one thing you can control in your life. So when I say attitude, it's your attitude. It's the, way you, it's the way you deal with the stuff that happens in your life. That's the only thing you can take. That's the only thing. And, and I'm telling you, it doesn't matter if you're a person in prison or, or in a marriage that's bad or um, a job that you've lost or whatever. The bottom line is all those things you really can't control, those things are going to happen. But what you do with those things are what's important. And look at this passage from 1 Peter. Verses uh, chapter 4, verse 12 through 13. He says, Dear friends, don't be surprised. Circle that. Just remember that fiery trials are going to come. And you're going you're to go through them as if 
Let me start this over. Dear friends, don't be surprised at the fiery trials you are going through as if something strange were happening to you. You know, stuff happens. It just happens. And, and I don't know why, but for some reason, maybe it's because we kind of got the God is a genie in the bottle kind of thing. But, or God's just a loving Father and He wouldn't let this happen. But, but the bottom line is, things happen and God will allow us to go through things because He allows them to be fiery trials that we come out stronger on the other side than when we go in. You know, you're, you really, let me tell you something, you don't have a whole lot of credibility as a Christian until you've been through fire. You don't. Y'all remember Mrs. Cleaver? Beaver's mom? Did anybody ever take her seriously? You know, pearls. Nothing, you know, the worst that ever went wrong was Beaver shot a spit wad at school. You know, I mean, I mean, nothing ever went wrong. You, know, you can't relate to somebody like that. But the, but the bottom line is, the, the stuff that we go through in our life are the things that make us the most credible Christians. And give us the ability to take it to the next level. Peter calls those fiery trials. Those are the things that are going to happen to you. He says, and then look what he says. Instead, be what? Let's all say it together. Be what? Very glad, Very glad for these trials make you partners with who? Christ. You know, think about it. Jesus could have come here and just been a king. He could have built the coolest castle. He could have lived in one of these big old houses over here in Collegeville and, and laid it all out and everything and just lived the perfect life that He wanted to live. But no, He came. You know, the book, the book of Hebrews says that He's actually our perfect high priest because of... because He lived in a mansion in Collegeville. Because of His trials. Because of the hell He went through on earth. He's our perfect high priest because He went through that hell and He lived it the way He was supposed to in faith and that makes Him our perfect high priest. He says, so that you will have the wonderful joy of seeing His glory when it's revealed to all the world through you. See, you're not going to impress your, the people you work with by just telling them, you know, what your Bible says or what the pastor says or, or using big words or even talking to them in King James Version. By the way, if you hadn't figured that out, no one likes you to talk in King James Version. It doesn't work that way. But what they see is when they see you go through the fiery trials, then they go, what? I don't know how you did that. And you tell them. Then you tell them about Jesus. 